A company called Sarcos is going public via a SPAC today. It's expected to start trading on the NASDAQ. It's not your run-of-the-mill robotics company, uh, though. The, uh, the company says it, it focuses on what are called full ba a full-body, battery-powered, highly dexterous exoskeletons. And, um, you know, that's what we're talking about right there. They're essentially robot suits. Uh, meant to augment human strength, which can make things like lifting much easier. We're going to take a look now at that technology. Joining us, Ben Wolf, Sarco CEO. Ben, you've had a, uh, a career that, that spans a lot of different uh, industries. Now, uh, now this one. Why the SPAC, though? Why, why do it that way? Uh, why did that make sense for Sarcos? Uh, you know, the SPAC gives us a tremendous opportunity to be able to tell our story to the public in a way that we wouldn't be able to do if we had gone the traditional IPO route. Um, you know my background, you know that I've taken companies public before through the traditional route. And when you look at what happens in the IPO process, a lot of focus on historical financials, historical performance. But when you're a company that's at the stage that we're at, where we're just bringing our products to market, you want to be able to tell the future story. And that's what inspires people about what our opportunity set is. So the SPAC gives us a setting to be able to do that. We don't know what the future looks like in terms of automation and technologies and everything else. And I'm sure that, uh, that something like this, like, like Sarco's product, will be uh, a part of it. But the exoskeleton, the, if you uh, can't really call it infrastructure, whatever you want to call it, that, that mode has been around and hasn't really totally caught on at this point. Uh, ben, is that a fair statement? And, and do you think that's about to change quickly? Well, you know, there have been things called exoskeletons that have been envisioned in, you know, science fiction and movies and popular culture for, for decades. But there has never been a full-body wearable robot like ours. Uh, this is the first of its kind. Uh, and we do think it's going to fundamentally change the way industrial work gets done. Like, who would your customers be and, and what problems would the exoskeleton solve uh, if, if someone were, were to climb into one of those things? Well, realize if you got into it, you'd be able to start lifting 200 pounds with no stress or strain on your body at all. So we're eliminating the risk of occupational back injuries, which is the second leading reason why people don't come to work in this country behind the common cold. More importantly, we're really addressing the problem that's caused by there being an insufficient supply of skilled labor. You know, it seems like you, you, you guys talk about it on your program all the time, the number of people that are needed to fulfill jobs in manufacturing and construction, warehousing and logistics. We're short by millions and millions of workers in this country, and that's going to have a significant economic impact on companies and our country's GDP overall. So we're trying to deliver a next generation workforce that can allow a single human worker to do the work of three, four, five, or more workers. So we're solving both the productivity problem and also we're addressing the worker injury and safety problem. And so that additional uh, ability, and, and you know, you, you seem to assume that I can't just lift 200 pounds easily without any, uh, <laughs> which is a pretty darn, <clears throat> pretty darn good assumption, but uh, how does that suddenly allow five people, how does that replace five normal people just by being able to lift, a, a, it just seems like it replaces one person that, that's not going to hurt his back. Well, realize that today the OSHA guidelines say that one individual ought to be lifting somewhere around 35 or 40 pounds maximum. Um, and there's an awful lot of lifting that goes on in, in all of these different industries. You can just do the simple math. Uh, one person lifting 200 pounds instead of four or five people to get, getting, having to get right, together and bend over and lift something in tandem. 